Number four, a study of the rate of dimerization of C486 gave the data shown in the table. And the balanced equation for this reaction is 2C486, which will yield C8H12. And then they give us a nice little chart with time in seconds and the concentration of the C486 over uh, periods of time. Now, for this question, it says estimate the instantaneous rate of dimerization at 3,200 seconds from a graph of time versus uh, the concentration of C486. And then what are the units of this rate? Okay. So, first off, we see the word estimate here, right? Estimate just means that we don't have to get a, the exact value. We just have to be pretty close to it, mainly because we are taking our information from a graph. So we do have to graph out these values. Now, instead of me trying to graph this out here for you, right, what we have is our handy dandy TI-84 plus CE, which I love so, so, so much. Uh, this calculator can make the graph for you and you can get a much better accurate uh, answer. So I will show you how to plot points in your TI-84 uh, CE, and then we'll go from there as to how to find an instantaneous rate. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to press the stat button because the first thing I need to do is I need to plug in these values. So the stat button will take you there and we're going to press enter because we want to edit our graph or edit our table. Basically, we're going to make a table. So we're going to press enter and here are all of our columns, right? So I just need to make one column for my time values and one column for my molarities. So I guess I'll name L2 uh, as one column and then the L3 one as the other one. So I'll start with my time. I'll start with zero. So I'll plug that in, zero, enter. All you have to do is just plug in the number and press enter. So I'll say zero, 1600, enter, 3200, enter, 4800, enter, and 6200, enter. Beautiful, one side is done already. Let's make the next part. So 1.00, second comma means times 10 to the, uh, then I just have to plug in the exponent, negative two. There we go, 5.04 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, um, even though it says 0 0.05, if I hover over that, it does have the whole number. So it just kind of like estimates, but it, it has the actual value in there. Uh, 3.37, times 10 to the negative third and 2.53 times 10 to the negative third and 2.08 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, we have all of our values, right? And if we wanted to categorize these, right? Remember time is always an independent access because no matter what we want to say, right? No matter what we do, time is going to keep going on without, you know, us doing anything. So whether we like it or not, time is always going to be increasing. So time is independent and the independent axis is always the X axis. So time is always going to be on the X axis, which means that the molarity changes according to time that's dependent. So this is your Y axis. So the first column here is X and the second column here is Y. Now, how do we take these uh, two tables and plug them in into a graph. Well, then we're going to go to second stat plot. So stat with stat plot. So I'm going to click the second Y equals button because that's the stat plot. And I get something like this. Now we just need to turn on our stat plot. So maybe um, the first one would be off if you haven't done this before. I've done this before, which means that I already turned on my one plot. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to run through uh, how to turn this on if your plot one says off. So what you're going to do is you're going to press enter and then it should be hovering. Maybe you'll see a black uh, outline around off right now and the on is, uh, you know, bopping around. So maybe, maybe I'll just show you. You probably see something like this where you have it on off and the on is flashing. All you have to do is just press enter to turn it on and that's it. Now, we can give a couple of different types of graphs. We could either do scatter lines, which means no, just dots, no lines. You could do a linear, uh, you know, line where they go, uh, put a line for dot to dot, um, you know, all these other ones. 
So we're just going to keep it standard, right, with the, with the line. So that's the second one. And the X list, I believe we are good to go. Um, I think we're good. You can change your mark, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you could even change the color of what the plots look like, but that's fine. Um, okay, so we should be good to go now. So now the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to zoom because we want to see our graph. So don't press graph because graph only shows the y equals values. Since we have everything in the stat, we press zoom and then we press zoom stat, which is number nine. So you could just press number nine or you can go down to number nine and press enter. It does not matter which one you do. Press enter. Oop. Check list size, error. Hold on, what happened here? Now let me just troubleshoot here. So just in case this happens to you, generally speaking, it's gonna be your list values. So if we go back to our stat, right, we go back to our two tables, I do notice that my two tables are L2 and L3. Now let's see, if I go back to stat plot and I check my list, oh, uh, there's the problem. I have to recall that my X is L2 and my Y is L3. So just make sure that your lists, which are L's, are the same numbers. So uh, in order to change this, all you have to do is go to second stat. You see that list word? That is the L button. So I'm just going to go second stat, and I'm going to say this should be L2. And then my Y should be L3. Now everything is all, well, should be all good. Let's go to zoom and press that nine button zoom stat. Aha, there we go. What a beautiful graph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it on in here. So here's my lovely, lovely, lovely graph. Now, and we can plot the points, right? Zero comma one times 10 to the negative second would be this right here. 1600 will be this one, 3200 would be this one, 48 and 62. Now the question for this one says that we want to find the instantaneous rate of dimerization at the 3200 second mark, which is the third plot point out of the bunch. So that's this one. Now an instantaneous rate, always know that an instantaneous is always a tangent line. Oh boy, bringing back what? Geometry? <laughs> tangent line? It is the tangent line of the specific time. So we have to find the tangent line of the 3200. Now remember, a tangent line is always going to be that one linear line that only runs through this point. So if we maybe just make a little dot here, and I want to make sure that I only run through that point, I'm just going to skim the bottom and touch that one point. And thank goodness for, uh, you know, thank goodness for um, technology because my straight lines are terrible, but now it's perfect. And that looks like a really good, a really good um, straight line here. Now, the only thing here is that we have to now take two points that are on this tangent line. Now, you could take any two points. You could go all the way down back to zero if you wanted to extend that line. Right? If I wanted to extend, whoop, if I wanted to extend the line, let's see. If I wanted to make that, that tangent line all the way down, and maybe I'll do that here. Mm, that's not really a good tangent line. Let me try again. Skim it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So something along the lines of that. But, you know, just to make it more specific, here's a better tangent line, right? It only hits that one point at one particular, you know, point on the graph. But now the idea here is that you have to just make sure that you have a point that is on your graph. Now, how are we going to actually find out what these points are? Well, that's where we're going to go back to the calculator and try to estimate, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cursor down and it looks like maybe one of the lines, I don't know, would be, maybe we'll try to shoot for this one down here, right? We'll try to shoot for this right here, which is right below this number. So what I'm going to do is maybe we'll say, maybe it's right around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this again with that marker on it and see if I scaled this up. Will that, um, will that tangent line match? Let's see, will it work out? So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it over here. Hey, that fits pretty good. A little bit low. So maybe we'll make it a little bit higher and call it a point because remember, it's all about estimation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that and we will shoot it up a little bit. That's good. Okay. So now I, oh boy, what is going on? Let's go back. Zoom. Oh boy. Christina with a calculator. I don't know. There we go. Oh no, I lost the point. <laughs> ah, how's your day going? As you can see, not, not too good, especially with manipulating calculators on this fine morning. Let's just make sure that this is good to go. I'll do it one more time. Now, in order to avoid this problem, if you really want to, you could always graph, you know, freehand. Um, ah, that's beautiful. Okay. So what I'll do maybe is we will take this one, throw this away, bring this one over here, and maybe we can, you know, resize this a little bit. But then technically it wouldn't be the right size. So maybe I'll just put it over here and let's see, actually, let's throw it over here. Let's get this going over here. Oh no. Okay. Beautiful. Let's bring this up here and bada bing, bada boom. Beautiful. I'm going to erase this. Oh no, the line didn't show up. Well, we can always just redraw it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that tangent line boop through those two points and that's beautiful here's the one and here is the two so this point right here is x comma y so this point is four seven nine i guess one if you want to um round and then 0 0.00203 if you wanted to round. So now we can finally get the instantaneous rate because whenever you're trying to find a rate, you always need two points on the graph. So in this case, we have the two points on the tangent line. Now a rate is always equal to the change in your concentration divided by time, right? Remember, the, the x-axis was the time, and the y-axis was the change in that concentration. So, um, always change in x over change in y. It's basically the slope. That's what a rate is. So, all we have to do is just talk about it in terms of final concentration uh, over final time, minus initial concentration over initial time. So we'll do finals first and then minus initial. And maybe I'll just put up here that your rate in general is always going to be the change in the concentration, the brackets, right? Brackets mean concentration over the change in a certain time. So final would, I guess, be this value, right? So this value on the tangent line is the final because it's farther out. And then this one is your initial. So let's see, final values would be the, the concentration on the top, 0 0.00203. Or if you wanna put that in scientific notation, 
just to make sure that everything else is in scientific notation, it would be 203 times 10 to the negative third over the 4,791. So if you want to round, it would be 4,800, just to keep all the, sci the sig figs together. And then this would be minus your initial values, which was the 3,200 point, 3.37 times 10 to the negative third over 3,200. Now we're finally back to math. So rate equals, now I can just quit this out because now I just need to do my math, 2.02 .02 times 10 to the negative third minus 3.37 times 10 to the negative third. And I just need to put this as a decimal. That looks good to me. So you get negative 0.00. .00 one, three, five, and that's fine. The negative value, because we're dealing with the C4H6 concentration. This is the C4H6, it's a reactant. So, as this reaction is progressing, the C4H6 should be decreasing, and the C8H12 is increasing. That's why this is a negative. And if we look at the slope, it is a negative slope, right? And so is our tangent line. So, this negative checks out. And it's going to be divided by 4,800 minus 3,200, so 1,600. And now we have this value divided by this value. And there we go. Now, the calculator unfortunately doesn't understand, and maybe we'll do, I guess we'll do three sig figs, 8.4. Uh, I guess we'll say 8.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. Okay. Now, Calci loves to do math, right? Does math perfectly if we just, in, you know, uh, input the correct numbers. However, it doesn't understand chemistry. So, Calci is going to spit out a negative value. But however, when you're talking about a rate, a rate is always going to be a positive value. The negative here just means to you that the C4H6 is disappearing. So sometimes in chemistry, there's gonna be signs, positive and negative, that is just basically talking to you as to what's really going on. Disappearing. But as far as the rate value, that rate should be a positive 8.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now the next thing is they asked for what are the units of this rate? Well, the units of a rate is always going to be whatever your y-axis is over your x because these two units, molarity and seconds, they don't cancel out. So the numerator was all about that concentration, so this would be molarity, and if you want to be even more specific, molarity of who? It's the C4H6 over seconds. So we can group both of these answers in the same question. So the rate is going to be the 8.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now you might get a different answer than me, right? Maybe you might get eight, um, Maybe you might get 7.8 or 7.4. Um, just the only thing here is that we're just estimating. The only thing that really matters is that your, your exponent is the same as mine. So if you're in the negative seven realm and you're around like six to seven to maybe nine, I think you're pretty good. Um, just saying that if you're you know taking a different point than I am. And there are those units, molarity of C486 over the seconds. And we're done. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more problems. Take care, and have a great, great day. Keep studying hard. You guys rock. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.